Hey everyone, Kuro the Artist here. This video is going to be a direct sequel to my first Ben 10 Iceberg video, with additional information being added onto the first iceberg, rather than making a separate second one. So I highly suggest you watch that video first so you're all caught up, as I'll be skipping all of the layer introductions and other things and just continuing off of the first video as normal. That being said, let's jump right into this one. The Halloween Trio. During Season 3 of Classic, we focused a lot on Ben's ability to scan his aliens along with the overarching plot of the Scare's Revenge. With that, Ben unlocks three aliens that resemble monsters. At the time, their names were simply Ben Wolf, Ben Mummy, and Ben Victor, and you can kind of see the resemblance of how they'd be stereotypical Halloween archetypes. Since all of these aliens had a similar monster vibe and were exclusively used during the Ghost Freak arc, at the time, fans dubbed them as the Halloween Trio. And that name still kind of sticks around today. The Rust Bucket. The motorhome that Team Tennyson drive around the country is called the Rust Bucket. Pretty common knowledge, right? Well, the Rust Bucket actually had three different versions. Each one went through its own series of destruction and demolitions, but after the first Rust Bucket couldn't be repaired anymore, Grandpa Max did replace it with the Rust Bucket 2, debuting in the first episode of Ben 10 Alien Force, Ben 10 Returns Part 1. In Ultimate Alien, the new trio made of Ben, Gwen, and Kevin get their own specialized green spaceship that was upgraded by Kevin and deemed the Rust Bucket 3. And little known fact that I was recently pointed out to myself, the first rust bucket was modeled after a real motorhome, a 1978 GMC motorhome. If you do some quick Google searches, even the interior lines up one to one with how it does in the cartoon, which makes it very fascinating that you could own a real life rust bucket. The live action movies. In the original run of the franchise, Ben 10 had two live action movies, the first one being Race Against Time and the second one being Alien Swarm. Race Against Time was based on the classic series and Alien Swarm was based on Alien Force. And thankfully, I had the opportunity to sit down with Ryan Kelly, the star of Ben 10 Alien Swarm, in a video I released a few months ago on this channel, where he revealed there were going to be two more live action movies, but the plans fell through when CN's live action department basically fizzled out. Professor Paradox. One of the most notable side characters in Ben 10 is Professor Paradox, a mysterious time traveler whose name was forgotten to everyone, including himself. He was nicknamed Paradox by Gwen the first time that the team met him, and was written because Dwayne McDuffie was an avid Doctor Who fan. And for you power scalers out there, there's even supporting evidence that Professor Paradox could be more powerful than Alien X, but I'm not even going to touch that can of worms. Go do your own research and tell me what you think. Subspecies in the Omnitrix. In Omniverse, it was revealed that the two very different designs of Upchuck throughout the series are actually two different transformations entirely, as subspecies of Gormans can qualify as two separate transformations. This was done simply because Derek liked both designs of Upchuck and wanted to integrate them into the show. They were called the Perks, named after Tom Perkins, the original designer of Upchuck, and the Mercs, named after Glenn Murakami, the second artist that designed Upchuck. And with that one solid fact, it opens up a plethora of opportunities of how sub species can work in the Omnitrix and expands the amount of possible transformations tenfold. If you'd like to know more, check out my video on everything that the Omnitrix can turn Ben into, which was our 300,000 subscriber special. Thank you guys so much. Ben's Kids. This show deals with a ton of time travel, so Ben's bound to run into some future characters every now and then, notably Ken Tennyson, his future son, and also a future wielder of the Omnitrix, who at one point, without his Omnitrix abilities, went back in time and assisted Ben during the Time War. But putting all of that time travel to the side, Ben also had 14 Necrophrygian children, you know, Big Chill's race, as Big Chill's species instincts were so strong that they overpowered Ben and forced him to go through the entire asexual reproduction production cycle of a necrophrygian. Yep, those are your kids. How? And while Ben only brings up those offspring and passing remarks now and then, we did do our own touch on what Ben's interactions would be like with his kids in the future in the seventh episode of our animated series and beyond. Omnitrix City. So the future city that Ben 10,000 lives in is called Omnitrix City, or as an alternative name to some, New Xenon. This city is always shown in the future, although it has gone through a couple of makeovers and is located just outside of Mount Rushmore, as that monument can frequently be seen in the background. Mastered Alien X. 
So Alien X discussions can go on forever, but let's keep this one simple. In the handful of appearance Alien X has had, the most significant one was the Galactic Gladiator battle, where Ben actually convinced the two personalities inside of his head, Bellicus and Serena, to give him full control of the transformation temporarily. From that point forward, Ben has had full control of Alien X whenever he chooses to use that transformation. Whether that means he gets better at debating with Bellicus and Serena, or they continuously give him the keys either way, from that point forward, Ben can use Alien X with no more notable drawbacks. Although morally, he still tends to use that transformation as little as possible. Ultimate Challenge So surprisingly, there's been a handful of live-action game shows centered around the Ben 10 franchise. The most famous one being the United Kingdom's Ben 10 Ultimate Challenge, which was centered around the Ultimate Alien era of the show. Now, there have been other game shows produced since then based on various versions of the series, including the reboot, but Ultimate Challenge seems to be the most notable one. Surf the lava! Here we go, the lava is moving. Gone for a three point straight away, both of them did. Charmcaster's real name. In Ultimate Alien, it's revealed that Charmcaster's real name is Hope. Although since this revelation, that barely comes up, and has sparked debate on whether or not it's truly canon ever since the Universal reboot in Omniverse. Personally, I'm not a fan of it, but I also don't hate it. I kind of just don't care. But the fact still remains, and whatever you guys think about it, let me know in the comments below. Technology levels. So all of the technology in Ben 10 is scaled using the special universal measurement of technology levels. And while there's no official scale, the Ben 10 wiki has taken every time that the technology levels were mentioned and tried to put together this infograph on how exactly they would work. And it's always more or less consistent. While we don't have an entry for what every single level is, it's still something that you can go off of to try to understand the lore of Ben 10 more, and it's always neat to hear characters make references to this subject. Those lances are level 5 technology. Planet Earth is only level 2. Tetrax's hollow message. So this is one of those pop-up trivia facts that sort of took on a reputation of its own. In Secret of the Omnitrix, the reason that Ben suddenly knows Tetrax's name, what his hoverboard is called, how to do this salute thing, and other various facts is because Tetrax left a holographic message attached to the hoverboard he gave him at the end of the fifth episode, Hunted. We never see it take place in the episode, and the validity of pop-up facts always do kind of go up and down, but this is one that we can take to heart because it explains a lot of the missing information we have in Secret of the Omnitrix, and you know, it does seem like something that Tetrax would do. Neil Toys tie-ins. Like most franchises, Ben 10 has dabbled with toy tie-ins with various restaurants, including KFC and McDonald's. And thanks to that, we get this very weird commercial. The Harlem Shake. Now, Ben 10 has had a ton of international, originally animated commercials that if I tried to name every single one, we'd be here forever. And that might as well just be a video on its own. Do you turn into a hot dog sometimes? Be honest, Ben. The one I mentioned in the first video was the Ben and Rook rap, but this time I'm bringing up the Harlem Shake, which was a trend started by Filthy Frank around the early 2010s. Do do the Harlem Shake. And one more notable commercial I will mention is the Justice League crossover. Alguém aí quer metade do meu sanduco? Eu, 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 eu quero, valeu. This one was originally made for Latin America, I believe. I forgot the exact country of origin, but it was dubbed in English by the official cast of both Justice League and Ben 10. And you can find it right here on YouTube. Does uh, anyone want half my sandwich? Oh, 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 oh I do. Wild Mutt reboot cameo. While a Vulpamancer did eventually show up in the flesh in the Ben 10 reboot movie, movie, Ben 10 vs. the Universe, before that, the original 10 is all we had to go off of. And in one of the earliest episodes of Season 1, you can see Reboot Ben wearing a mask that resembles Wild Mutt, as a nod to the original continuity. Omniverse Rise of Heroes There was this online MMO RPG called Ben 10 Omniverse Rise of Heroes, but it didn't have a US release, where you essentially created and played as your own alien fusion. There's a lot of footage and screenshots online that you can look for, but sadly it seems like the servers have shut down down by now, but the only thing I really remember from this back in the day was that really cool CG commercial that helped promote the film, which I'm sure you could still find on YouTube that'll link below as well. Good thing I've got backup. It's here, 
Ben 10 parodies. It's rare to see Ben 10 be referenced outside of Cartoon Network, or even by Cartoon Network itself, honestly. But it has had its own handful of parodies. The Mad TV show did Ben 10 Franklin, which is probably the most famous parody. Big Ben, meet Bigger Ben! There was also the Ben 10 Robot Chicken short, which was a bit strange. And in one episode of South Park, you could see something labeled as a Ben 10 wrist rocket, whatever the hell that would be. As for fan parodies, the most famous one that I can see is probably Xander Flix's original line of Ben 10 parodies. Each one has millions of views, so I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen a few of them by now. You should definitely check out Xander Flix's channel. He's most known now for Ben 10 One Last Time, his own animated series, which I am already a huge fan of. So go over there and show him some support if you haven't already. Can't take the Omnitrix, Vilgax. You know you can't. Asmuth's dad. Asmuth's dad. Asmuth's dad. The, the father of Asmuth. He was shown in Destroy All Aliens. Even though that's only one of five Ben 10 movies, that one's the one that gets forgotten about the most. In fact, by the time this video comes out, I'm sure my Destroy All Aliens video is out by now. But anyways, Asmuth's dad. Da Dadsmith looks a lot younger than Asmuth and is even pointed out by Ben in the movie and we're never given an explanation for it. As I said in my breakdown, so the two theories that have been given by writers is A, Galvin sort of age backwards, you can take that as whatever you think it means, or B, the one I like to go with, is Dadsmith is so old that he put his brain into the body of a younger Galvin clone that, you know, he can live longer. So through that process, Galvins are kind of immortal. Moot. So in the first two seasons of Alien Force, we deal with the species called the hybrid, which being an alien classifies as a valid transformation for Ben. Back when the McDuffie forms were a thing, someone asked Dwayne if Ben had a hybrid transformation, what would he call it? To which Dwayne responded, moot. In which, for if you don't know, it means subject to debate, dispute, or uncertainty. I feel like he was just saying that the name of a Ben 10 hybrid transformation isn't important because it's never gonna happen, but fans took that as Ben's hybrid transformation would literally be called moot, and people still believe that to this day. And if you want to check it out, I did my own version of a hybrid transformation called Power Plant. A link to his 5 YL wiki page is down below. Fool's Gold. Arguably the worst episode of Alien Force and to some of the entire franchise. Although personally for that title I would vote either Clyde 5 or Vredel Mania. Fool's Gold is an episode of the third season of Alien Force where aliens literally shit gold. In an interview with Eugene Sun, it was revealed that this episode was made as a response to being denied their original plans for season 3. And they purposefully went with the most ridiculous idea they they could think of and said if the networks had a problem with it, they had no one to blame but themselves. Way to stick it to the man, McDuffie. Overflow was water hazard. In the reboot, we're introduced to this transformation named Overflow, which has had very strong comparisons to water hazard. But it seems this may have been the crew's intention, as in some of the early concept art of Overflow, you can see that he originally had the same species in Homeworld as Water Hazard. This leads a lot of people to believe that perhaps they wanted to use Water Hazard, but for whatever reason they couldn't. Or similar to Stinkfly, they wanted to change water hazard quite a bit. However, since then, Overflow has gotten his own species in Homeworld, and it has been confirmed that water hazard exists in the reboot Omnitrix as an independent transformation. Dwight Schultz. Dwight Schultz is the voice actor for Dr. Animo. His voice is so iconic in the franchise that with all five series, he is the only voice actor to consistently reprise his role across everything, including the reboot and the movies. While in the first four series, there are a handful of characters that all Always have the same voice actor. Dwight Schultz is the only one to also voice the same character in the reboot. I guess he's just that irreplaceable. And can you blame them? His voice is iconic. You may have ruined my plan today, Tennyson, but there's always tomorrow! Action Packs. So Cartoon Network released a bunch of tie-in comics for the Ben 10 franchise called the Cartoon Network Action Packs. It's been handled by many different writers and artists throughout its whole run. And while there has been some cool stories here and there, a lot of them can generally be pretty weird. There's the one where Ben transformed directly into Ultimate Swampfire but fused with Julie. There's the one where Ultimate Echo Echo still retained his cloning power. The one where Vilgax's future son from the year 3000 came back in time and pretended to be Ben 10,000 to trick Ben 10 into getting close to him so he can kill him, but then the real Ben 10,000 showed up and, you know, just go read it. But a cool thing is there was an issue called Hero Times 2, which is basically a sequel to the Generator Rex crossover, Heroes United. Whether or not it's canon, I'm gonna have to say no. All the action packs were written just for extra Ben 10 content to give it more publicity. And while some of the comics can link up into the main timeline, most of them fall pretty short of believability. <laughs> 
Volpanic Tortigans, or Tortugans, I don't know. In the pop-ups, it was suggested that there's a more primitive version of the Arborian Pelorotas that live on Wildmutt's home planet of Vulpin. And while the series proper has never acknowledged this fact, a lot of people have speculated since Vulpin was originally a pitch black planet, hence why Wildmutt has no eyes, which in turn leads people to believe that this right here is a Volpanic Tortugan. Tortugan. I don't know. Different colored Petrosapiens. Yeah, so a lot of these pop-ups become much more significant than some of the others, this being another one that there are different colored Petrosapiens on Petropia. But we don't get enough history of Petropia to really know how it would work. Destroy all aliens is test short. So to pitch the idea that a CGI Ben 10 movie would work, the film's crew put together this little two-minute short using a lot of assets that would make its way proper into the film to sell the idea to Cartoon Network that they're able to make this movie. Now, while a lot of these things in the short do look pretty pretty familiar from the film, this short exists outside of the film's continuity. For example, the chain between Ben and Gwen is identified as Grandpa Max's plumber snake, rather than being attached to them by the retaliator so that he can continue to fight the evil Waybig. And the Waybig that shows up in the end has a different Omnitrix and lacks a lot of the textures that Destroy All Aliens gave him, further emphasizing the idea that this Waybig model came directly from Cosmic Destruction. Retconned Home Worlds. Lore getting retconned in Ben 10 pretty much is part of the lore of Ben 10 at this point. And before something makes it into the actual canon, previous release information on other media can be contradicted and retconned. The most famous one is Chromastone's home planet, Morotesi, which is a whole level in Vilgax Attacks. This was retconned away as Chromastone was revealed to be the DNA sample of Sugalite, a one-of-a-kind being that is the guardian of Petropia. Other examples is the Shadow Realm, which was evidently Vilgax's original homeworld, and Zvesta, which was Alien X's homeworld, a cosmic rift inside of the Ben 10 universe before being changed to existing outside of the multiverse in the Forge of Creation. Max's Hologram during the events of Ben 10 Returns Part 1, after he reads Grandpa Max's hologram, for a few frames you can see him fade away and it shows the image of a DNA alien. Love you. Max out. Max out. This is never explained and never happens again. But I do have some theories. One is Grandpa Max was wearing an ID mask that disguised him as a DN alien, and when recording the message, he turned off the ID mask so that he'd still look like himself so Ben would recognize him, but towards the end of the transmission, it started to glitch and turned the ID mask back on. Or two, it would have eventually been revealed that that wasn't Max all along, and it was a DN alien playing tricks on him. Whatever the reason was for this, we probably will never know, but alas, it exists in the episode as another mysterious anomaly of the Ben 10 universe. Canon incorrect spellings. So sometimes with Ben 10 media, whether it be Bandai or a website or simply fans themselves, a character or alien or object or whatever's name would be misspelled, and the misspelling will be used way more than the original spelling, and thus the misspelling eventually becomes the official spelling, and then is used from the show in that point forward. Some examples of this are Humongosaur being spelled with an extra U, Vladite being spelled as Vladat, Raznarok being spelled with a C instead of a G, I Guy being spelled with a UY, instead of a Y-E, Dagon being spelled with an extra I, and Arcticguana being spelled as Arctic Guana. While through the years some of these misspellings have been corrected, a lot of them stick and are now permanent, and I'm sure there's more examples of misspellings out there. Where is the first to scare? So as we know, when Ben samples the DNA of the Omnitrix, he transforms into his own version of the species. The DNA donor doesn't get sucked into the Omnitrix or anything like that. So when you think about it, when Zascare escapes the Omnitrix and goes freaked out, he is not the original Ghost Freak that scanned the Omnitrix. So there could potentially be two Ghost Freaks out there, and in that case, what happened to the original one? This theory can also be pushed further as maybe every time Zascare is destroyed, he is recreated as a new Ghost Freak. And for all we know, it's a different one every time. The Korean Comics the US isn't the only one that does its own fair share of tie-in comics. There's the Japanese ones, there's the Fusion Fall manga, but the one I'm going to talk about is the Korean run of Ben 10, which just like the action packs can get pretty weird. For example, there's a story where Dr. Animo creates a tiny clone of Ben, who has a different personality than Ben, and eventually turns into sparkly magic dust. There's new designs for Kevin's aliens, there's this knockoff Omnitrix called the Omega Doom. I've never read these because I can't understand the language, but you can find many screenshots online and maybe some of y'all can try to make sense of this for me. Max based on Shazam. 
So Dave Johnson, one of the Classic Series' character designers, has claimed that Max is based on an older version of Shazam. He uses the same color palette, and the folds of his shirt are able to form the lightning logo of Shazam. Omniverse takes this a step further, where Derek has claimed that Max's squinty eyes was also based on a look for Shazam in the comics. The Gender Setting Another one of Wyatt's responses that took on a life of his own is the possibility that the Omnitrix has a setting that allows Ben to change his gender. And honestly, with all the shit that the Omnitrix can do, that's probably one of the most easily believable things. I mean, why would it not be able to do that? Whether or not Ben will ever find that setting in the future? Well, have fun with it, Ben. Maybe it'll give you an even further understanding of all the species in the universe. Cannonbolt was in the original 10. As shown in the i10 user-generated experience, one of the facts presented was that Cannonbolt was originally part of the first playlist of aliens, but was later swapped for Diamond Head. Probably for better storytelling reasons, and you know, I'm a big fan of Diamond Head. And we did end up getting Cannonbolt eventually anyway, so it wasn't a total loss. Thank you guys for checking out the sequel to my Iceberg video. The Iceberg has now been reorganized and updated with all of this information, and you can find a link to it down below if you'd like to share it around. Don't forget that Breakdowns will return in September, but until then you can stay up to date with everything that I do on my social media. You can also join the Patreon for exclusive weekly updates on everything that we do, including 5YL and, and beyond. Summer's coming to an end, so I hope y'all make it a good one. And as always, keep it fizzy.